Good morning. It's good to see you here today. Nice full room. Um, thanks to those of you who came out a little bit early for Cookies, Coco, and Charlie Brown. We had a good time, right? Yeah. So if you missed it and you're like, oh man, I would really love some cookies. There are still some cookies in the back over there. Um, please take some uh, as you're leaving today because I do not need to eat all of those cookies. Thanks. So you picked a great Sunday to be here. It's Joy Sunday, and we are dedicating Little Miss Cora today. Um, and then next Sunday is also going to be a great Sunday to be here. It's our Advent Music Festival, and I know that the choir has been working extra hard to get ready for that. Um, also coming up are our Christmas Eve uh, and Christmas Day services. You can see all of that in your worship guide. So this Advent we've been considering now in flesh appearing, about how God came to be with us with skin and bones. And so it's right that we welcome one another. We find our joy when we are at peace with ourselves and our neighbors. Share the joy and peace of Christ with your neighbors, family, and friends. May the peace of Christ be with you. So take a minute and pass the peace to your neighbors.
Rejoice, siblings in Christ, for our sorrow and mourning will not last forever. Rejoice, siblings in Christ, for God's mercies are new every morning. Amen. Glory to God. Every morning is new. Grace abounds. Rejoice, siblings in Christ, for God is with us even now. season of Advent reminds us of hope we have in the humanity of Jesus. God came to us leaving behind the glory of heaven to be a person feeling pain, joy, loss, and love. reminds us the <laughs> sorry the prince of peace came and lived among us he felt stress within himself and conflict with other people yet he chose his path of peace peace within himself and peace with humankind There is joy in the anticipation of the Advent season. Just as Mary waited for the birth of her son, we count the weeks and days to celebrate Christmas, waiting space for imagination and preparation, and joy fills our hearts in that waiting. Bring your family up here, please. Sweetie, oh, we go. Cora, this is an exciting day. It's your dedication day. Are you ready? Maybe. <laughs> so I don't need to introduce this one to most of us. This is Cora Jean Lawton. We thought we might do this several months ago, 
before the idea of separation anxiety set in. <laughs> but Miss Cora was coughing, and so many of you were coughing too that we thought we'd better wait till now. So, Cora, will you bring your mommy this way? And we can see some of our friends much closer. You guys can stay here. Look around. See all these friends? So, um, Cora Jean, who is named after Stacy's grandmothers, um, and her name is also just happens to be convenient because it's the same in French and English. That was very important to mom. Um, and uh, Miss Cora, you see all these people? They're going to be your friends, and they're going to help your mommy and daddy in times when they need a little bit of help raising you. And see those guys over there in the blue shirts? You know them really well. Those are your proud big brothers, and they're going to help take care of you in the days ahead. Mm -hmm. And see that lady right there? That's Pastor Allison, and she's going to help your parents know what it means to raise you in this church. And she's got some words for us to say together right now. <laughs> But not nearly as important as the words that you have for us right now. I know. I think we should just let you do this part, Cor. What yeah. do you think? Maybe? I saw a smile at that, so I'll take it. We are here today to present Cora Jean Lawton to the church and to consecrate her to God. Who brings this child for this holy purpose? We do. What do we affirm about this child? We affirm that she is a child of God by creation, that she is loved and will be included in the experiences of this congregation. As she grows into childhood, what will we tell her about her heritage? We will tell her about God, about Sarah and Abraham, about Moses, about Ruth, and about the prophets. We will tell her about Jesus, the woman at the well, the apostles, and the worship and missions of the church. What will we hope for this child? We will look to the day that she will declare faith in Jesus Christ, confirm the heritage we will pass along, and come as an adult to choose full commitment to God's will and work. Do you, as parents of this child, assume primary responsibility for keeping her in touch with such hopes and expectations? Yes, yes. we have to continually accept this responsibility. And do you, the congregation, pledge to work toward creating a nurturing environment for Cora? Yes, we do, for she belongs to us as well. Then may God be with us. And may God help us all. Amen. And Cora, we have a little gift to help mom and dad help you at home. I bet you like books. Oh, good. And that's one that's got lots of stories in it, stories about God. Yeah. You're welcome. Let us pray. Lord God, maker of precious babies, we give you special thanks this morning for this Advent season where we wait for a baby, the pure, needy, dependent Advent child. In a world where bad news is just around the corner at every minute, a baby gives us the good news and so much joy. This morning, we give special thanks for another long-awaited baby, Cora Jean. This precious baby has brought so much joy to her family and to us, her wider family. Give us the courage to claim our responsibility in helping to tell her the stories of Jesus and loving and supporting her as she grows. May we also love and support her parents, Stacy and Will, and brothers, Bo and Jackson. Keep Cora safe. Use her to be an instrument of peace to your hurting world. Use her hands to serve your people. Guide her feet as she travels her own journey 
and fill her heart with your peace and joy. It is in the precious name of Jesus, the baby born to us all. Amen. Reading from the 96th Psalm. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name, tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the people. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming. For he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Hear the word of joy as God's people as we wait. Thanks be to God. Let's pray together. God and source of all joy, people are suffering all around us and among us today. For many, this is not a joyful season of life, but a stressful, sad, or frustrating time. You embrace us no matter how much or little joy we contain. So we pray those who lack joy today will feel your comfort. For those who are missing loved ones, overwhelmed with school, stressed by work, or depressed for reasons they don't understand, we pray that our community might encourage their spirits, lighten their burdens, and share their grief. And for those who feel disconnected or lonely, may we be a community that reaches out and shows them care. Amen.
Will and Stacy, Jackson and Bo, wherever you are. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your gift of Corey Jane with the rest of us. You didn't have to, and we don't take that for granted. Thank you again. Please turn your attention to our gospel reading from the second chapter of Luke. Nearby, shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angel stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. Look, I bring you I bring good news to you, wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great assembly of the heavenly forces was with the angel praising God. They said, glory to God in heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what's happened. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. Hear the word of joy for God's people as we wait. So, as a child, I didn't grow up with Advent. If you'd asked me what the word meant, as a teenager even, I probably would have said something like, maybe a short adventure? And it may disappoint some of you to learn that I didn't learn about Advent in seminary either. It wasn't until the second church, where I served on staff, did Advent become part of my worship tradition? But I learned very quickly that many in that church took their separation of Advent and Christmas very seriously. All hymns and carols that even hinted at a Christ child were taboo until after Christmas Eve. I remember making a joke once that it seemed a major tenet of our theology there was based on not wearing white before Easter and not mentioning the baby Jesus before Christmas. I didn't make that joke again. (laughs) It was not well received. So you can bet that I would have been questioned regarding our gospel reading for today. In the region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Because those words are generally, traditionally reserved for Christmas Eve, not December 11th, the third Sunday of Advent. Yes, we don't usually read from this chapter so early, but if you noticed, we only got a precursor to the event in our reading today. When I stopped reading, the the shepherds, they still haven't gotten a glimpse of the baby. But since we've heard those words so many times, our minds are trained to, to keep following the story and to fill in the rest. But you didn't hear me say anything about seeing a baby. So please don't report me to the Advent police. With our theme this year of now in flesh appearing, we're spending these first few Sundays hearing about the proclamations of what people should expect. Last week it was the announcement to Joseph, and today... It's to the shepherds. So there they were, out in the field, minding their own business. And since their business was sheep, they were minding the sheep. And suddenly an angel scared the living daylights out of them. 
Now, the text doesn't specifically say it, but we all know that at least one of those shepherds peed just a little bit. And evidently, the angel knew it too, since their first words were, don't be afraid. Their next words, however, were more important. I bring you good news, wonderful, joyous news for all people. Now, As you've probably noticed, I don't usually talk much about Greek words in my sermons, mostly because I don't speak Greek. Now, I did study Greek in seminary, but unfortunately, I left most of it in seminary. (laughs) But there is one, at least one word that I remember, euangelion. It means good news. Now, Back when the angel was scaring the pea out of the shepherds, the Roman ministry of propaganda used this word, euangelion, to declare the good news of Caesar Augustus. But in that world, Caesar's good news only applied to the privileged few. 7% of the population, to be exact. Caesar had no good news for the other 93%, including the shepherds. So when the angel uses this, this same word, euangelion, good news, they are very deliberate to say that this good news is for all people. It's for the 7% and the 93%. It's for the insiders and the outsiders. It's for the rich and the poor. It's for the elite and the common. And yes, even for smelly shepherds who've peed just a little bit. But so what is this good news? Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you that you will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Now, do these common shepherds, do they connect the angel's words with those from the prophet Isaiah told centuries before? A child is born to us, a son is given to us, and authority will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Now, we don't know whether they make that connection to prophecy or not. We don't know what they were thinking after seeing and hearing these angels. But we do know what they did after seeing and hearing the angels. They went immediately. Now, the angel, if you read it, the angel didn't demand that they go anywhere. The angel simply told them, you will find the baby wrapped snugly in a manger. It was completely up to them what they did at that point. So so they start talking to each other to figure it out. Now, I grew up around livestock uh, when I was a child and around other people who dealt with livestock. And I've heard how people who deal with livestock talk to each other. And I never once heard anyone sound anything like, let us go now to see this thing that has taken place. Now, I, I could imagine hearing let's get going, or let's roll, or let's get after it, or let's get to it, or just simply get to it. But I don't remember livestock people really needing very many words at all, because in, in their culture, pretty much everyone knew what needed to be done, and so there were very few words needed 
to figure things out. So here, these shepherds, they look up at each other after this heavenly host has left them. And I suspect they don't need to talk much. They all know exactly what they need to do. So I think the most common, the most likely thing that probably was said was, get to it. And that's what they did. They went immediately. And, and no one even stopped to say, what about the sheep? That's right. It, it appears that they ran off and left these sheep unattended. So much so for watch, keeping watch over their flock by night. There was something more important to do. Seeing this child was more important than their sheep. Seeing this child was more important than, than sleep, more important than their livelihoods, more important than their families that, that depended on those livelihoods, more important than anything. And, and, and later, when that child that they're going to see, when he becomes a man, he will call others to come and see and fishermen, fishermen will leave their nets, drop them in their tracks to follow Jesus. And, and he will call sons, and they will leave their father sitting in the boat. He will call a tax collector down from a tree, and he would leave his fortune to follow Jesus. But he will call others as well, others who won't go. Later, in, in this same Gospel of Luke, we read where Jesus and his disciples were traveling along a road, and someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus replied, foxes have dens and birds of the sky have nests, but the one who follows me will have no place to lay their head. And, and then Jesus says to someone else, follow me. And that one says, Lord, first let me go and, and bury my father. Jesus says to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But you go and spread the news of God's kingdom. And, and someone else says to Jesus, I'll follow you. But, but first, let me say goodbye to, to the ones in my house that I love. And Jesus said to him, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for God's kingdom. The, the shepherds, they didn't stop to look out for, for their everyday responsibilities when they were called to go see Jesus. They didn't even stop to take care of their sheep. In doing so, they became models for all of us, of how we are to follow Jesus, to get to it, no turning back. And in that haste and urgency, they find joy beyond measure. They find a baby, they find joy. They find a savior, they find joy. And, and, and God, God continues to call us today as well. All of us, the 93% and the 7%, the insiders and the outsiders, the rich and the poor, the elite and the common. And, and, and if we, if, if we act with haste and urgency to follow the call of, of this life, of Jesus, we too will find joy beyond measure. We will find God now in flesh appearing. We will find joy. We will find a Savior. We will find joy. Thanks be to God. We will find joy. 
Join me now in our affirmation of joy. Siblings in Christ, let us proclaim the joy of our faith. In the beginning, when they encountered creation, the people of God felt joy. We rejoice in your creation, in mountains, deserts, rivers, and valleys. When no words were printed and scrolls held the law, the people of God felt joy. We rejoice in the deliverance, sources of wisdom and story of God. When liberation came to God's people, time and again the people of God felt joy. We rejoice in the deliverance of the poor and imprisoned. Let God's people go. When Jesus was born, not a king but a peasant, the people of God felt joy. We rejoice in Jesus, humble King and mighty Savior. When Jesus suffered, died, and three days later rose again, the people of God felt joy. We rejoice in our story of victory over death, the ultimate protest against powers of evil. When death shall come to us and our lives on earth are over, the people of God shall grieve. We grieve and rejoice, for all shall be well. In God's loving arms, all shall be well. This is the joy of our faith. Amen. and source of all joy. We cheerfully and humbly bring our gifts and offerings to the community. To be used for worship, helping ministries, our children, and all the other wonderful ways you create goodness around us.
wait with anticipation to see what you will do with our gifts. So we have been called to see and to follow the Christ child. Have we acted in haste and urgency in doing so? Can we honestly sing the words, my Jesus, I love thee? Have our actions shown that those, are, that, that those words are our honest That is our invitation before us this morning. May we be able to honestly say and sing, My Jesus, I love thee. Let us sing. So I admit we have gotten a glimpse of that baby today. We've gotten a glimpse of baby Cora, and we've gotten glimpses of baby Jesus. And those glimpses will get even larger next week and the week following. Next week when we have our our Advent Music Festival right here, Um, you will not want to miss that. And then obviously the following Uh, Saturday night is our Christmas Eve services. Uh, We've got a children's uh, family-friendly service at 4.30, and then our traditional uh, candlelight and communion service at 6.30. And yes, on that Sunday, December 25th, we will have worship right back here in the sanctuary. Um, We invite you to join us, but if you're with your family, don't feel bad about not being here um, as long as we see you sometime in that weekend. So now, as we go about our ways this week,
friends and family of Christ. We find peace in the incarnation of Christ. This inspires us to make peace wherever we go. Even if peace requires strength and courage, may you go forth in joy and courage today. May, you find, may your minds and spirits find serenity in God's hands and joy in the journey. Amen. Thank you.